Hello and welcome to Leon's Lock Pad. Today it is not a picking video, we are doing a lock re reassemble video as um <coughs> excuse me. Um there's not many videos out there of uh, reassembling locks and I had a a, ne a nice email sent to me asking if I would kindly you know do um well reassemble a lock and I said I would do because I suppose it's true as I was uh, on one of my comments that um, we do take for, take it for granted putting them back together we always show the gutting always, and you know we don't do uh, the reassembling but uh, hopefully this video will help you in any way and maybe you'll learn something but um, we'll get on with this but, but before we get on actually sorry if you uh, want to get involved in this uh, community and this lock sport please check out www.uklocksport.co.uk and if you're interested in what you see on my channel, what you like, please hit that subscribe button down there. And that bell icon does make two to three videos a week from locks to making locks to reviews to all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, let's get on. So what we've got, <clears throat> we have got three locks. I've got a Euro, all, pre, uh, some, uh, all pulled apart. We've got a mortise cylinder and we have a kick cylinder. So what I've done, I've done three types. These for the Euro guys and these for our cousins and our friends overseas and for the ones who get them over here as well. Um, so what I've done is I've done two stocks. So there's the Euro's the stock, the kick's the stock and the mortise cylinder is a challenge lock from my good friend Bobby Keys. Um, because uh, eventually, uh, like I say, you know, you're going to be opening, uh, you're going to be reassembling and gutting, you know, stop locks when you first start. But eventually you're going to get parcels and packages and, and challenge locks. Um, and I remember when I got my first challenge lock <clears throat> and I was doing the video and I was going to have to gut it. It absolutely stressed me out because I just didn't want it to fail or go wrong. But luckily, it, 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 it came right. So... Uh, Right, also the, the parts, well the stuff that you'll need is some followers, uh, you don't need special tweezers, these are just, these come in my hook kit, they're just stainless steel, but really just like makeup tweezers, so you can buy these from uh, the dollar store or the pound shop. Um, now followers, <clears throat> what I've done is, I'm going to leave it in the description, you can make your own if you don't, haven't got the money or don't want to buy one of these hook kits at the moment. Um, they're about 25 quid from eBay, Amazon, um, probably a bit cheaper on Banggood. Um, but what I, when I very first started disassembling locks and cutting locks, I didn't have no followers. I had none of this. I had a pair of uh, makeup tweezers and uh, I had to dig this out and I found it. This is a Sharpie. As you can see, it's a small Sharpie. What well, it is, I saw, it saw on the, uh, the end off. Filled the end up with the uh, blue tack, white tack, anything. Or you can even hot glue it until it's nice and flat. Um, as I'll show you with this, it fits in perfectly. It's uh, a little bit loose, not too bad, but for, for a makeshift follower, it works perfectly fine. Uh, I will demonstrate that in a minute. Also, if you go down to your local uh, dollar store or pound shop, um, take yourself... The Bible, just the Bible, no springs, no, no nothing, just like that. And go and check out in the makeup pile, makeup brushes, which do work. There's a lot of makeup brush handles that will uh, fit in there, absolutely perfect. You can obviously pay a dollar for them or whatever, or a pound, take them home, cut them in half, and you've got a perfectly good follower. Or go to your local hardware shop and get yourself a cut off of a piece of wooden dowel. Shouldn't cost you too much, really, a couple of pence, really. And the, for. Uh, the follower you want uh, the width would be 12.44 millimeters wide. Um, I won't go no more than four inches in length. Um, the small follower is 9.46 millimeters. And I won't go no more than four inches in length. I like I said, I'll put all those numbers in the description. And the small follower will do for another video at some point. When it, these are, I'll show you. There we go. That's your big follower, that's your small follower. This is mainly for like your American series locks and stuff like that, padlocks. This is for your all your, your normal standard locks. But um, yes, right, I will stop waffling and we'll get on with it. 
So what we'll do is, we'll choose the Euro first. As you can see, it's already uh, pre-assembled. All the pins are here. First set of pins are for the Euro, the second pins are for Bobby's Challenge Lock, and the top pins are for the kick cylinder. Now, what you do is, now please bear with me, I'm left-handed, not right-handed, so basically what you got to do is just the complete reverse. So, get your tweezers. Get your, your spring. If you look down the Bible, normally it's better to see from the back when you do it this way. Put your spring through. As you can see, there it is. And get it to drop into there. There's your first spring in. Same with your second spring. As you can see, what we're doing is looking for the fifth hole and then we just drop it in. Oh, this one has decided to fall out. Let me do that one again, sorry. This one doesn't. There we go. Didn't want to play ball. <laughs> then we get our. And it's the same for the rest. All you got to do is gently lower the springs into the hole like that. And then just let go. It's different with a challenge lock because some springs will be higher than the shear line. But on a stop lock, your springs should be just, if you can see, just slightly lower than the shear line. So once you've got all your springs in, Put your follower in like this because I'm like I'm left like I say I'm left-handed. What I do is I turn it around so I've got the back and the first two pins, which are five. I'll put number five in. And what you do is you just once you get the pin, once you get the pin and the variable. Push, push it against it with a follower so it doesn't flick out and then just use your tweezers to click it down and then slide to the next one. I'll show you what I mean. You put number six in. You see number six is just hovering now. If I push on the follower it's locked in place. It won't go anywhere. What? Because I'm pushing the follower through. And then what I do is get the tweezers to focus and then we just slide and there we go we're in and turn your lock back around so the front is facing you slide the follower slowly out until you see you get if it's a six pin you've already put two in so now you have four left so we get number four and the same thing just drop it into the hole there we go, you see, push the follower against it so it holds it in place and then you just push it down with the tweezers and push the, push a, push the follower through for the next one and basically the same with them all, just drop it in the hole, push it down click your follower along and same with the rest and let's get to the last one which is the very first one as we're in, see the follower is pushing against it and then just push and push your follower through. There we go. So we are all in, set up ready. Then what we do, put that down. Get your core. Now, this is best practicing with a core that you've got a key with. I'll show you what I mean now. So you put all your pins in. Make sure the pointy bit of your pin goes in the core first and the flat bit is at the top because you don't want it the wrong way around. And then what you do is you get your key and just, just to make sure that all the pins are in the right way and they're, uh, they're, they're all at the shear line perfectly because if the, if the pins were in the wrong way and you dropped them, be, this would, would look something like that. So you have to take them out and just keep swapping them around until they're all on the shear line. Like that. There we go. We'll pull the key out. And now we're ready to put it back into the Bible. Now what I do is, you know for a fact, here 
is the springs the springs and the drivers are all there what you don't want to do is put it in with this cut out as you see where the cat key well, let me just put my finger over the top this cuts out here where the key do not want to put that above your drivers because if you've got any type of challenge lock they will get locked in so turn it and this as well see these if I put this in through there now drivers will jam inside this cut out here and I'll be pretty much screwed It'd be quite difficult to get them back out so when you get your pins put your thumb on top so you don't lose them turn it 90 degrees and slowly put it right against your follower and then slowly push it through like this just force the follower out use the, the cover to push the follower out don't pull the follower out itself once you're through like that as you can see we're all in all we do is turn the lock until it locks in place we know it's uh it's locked up we'll just test it to make sure the lock works as you see nice and smooth um, remember to hold on when you're pulling the key out because you could yank all your pins out again and then what you need to do these are called c-clips um, springy ones are the best these box standard brass ones are an absolute pain they bend they twist they're just no good but get yourself a pair of pliers you don't need these, need, um, these special pliers like this you can use needle no nose pliers really because all you got to do is get it on the top and gently close it just make sure it's tight enough it doesn't have to be super tight but tight enough it's not going to pop off while you're uh, you're messing with the lock as you can see now there we go absolutely fine works nice and smooth that's the year old done and what we'll do now is we will do the kick now with some kick cylinders they're exactly the same on both sides so when you you separate them there is a front and there is a back even though it looks identical i generally on these like a lot of people i put a, a mark on the front of them so i know exactly which the front is because if you look that back hole is slightly further than this one so you can do it the wrong way around and it wouldn't work quite work right um, so if you ever disassemble one of these make sure you put an X on the front or a mark so, so you know which is the front what we'll do we'll do the same with this but this time I will use my sharpie follower so we'll put the springs in first and because the standard springs also, just let you know, this is a five pin kick, even though it's a six pin Bible and it's a six pin core. Not all kicks are six pins. They do have the the holes there ready for you to make it into a six pin. So remember, don't accidentally put, if you're a five pin, don't accidentally put your, um, your spring into the six core. Because you'll just lock up your, uh, you'll lock up your uh, core and then you're going to have to, basically take off the bottom plate and rebuild it so if it's a five pin core but it's got it's a six pin bible i mean but it's only got five pins make sure you put that fifth spring in the fifth hole and not the six anyway what i was saying is um now the springs on these kicks when it's a standard one like i say they'll all fit inside up to the shear line because there's nothing special about them they're not longer springs or anything so you should have no problem with putting them all in um, right get our makeshift follower and this time I'm going to do it another way that I do I get my first driver I push it down onto the pin onto the hole like this, you see I've got all of it now and I push in the follower and now it's resting on the follower. You can't really see that moment, sorry. But we are in. As you can see. Get the next driver. And if this is exactly the same as the Euro. You just get the driver. 
it should rest on top of the spring quite easily and then push it in and go to the next one and the next one like I say oh that one sprung off which they can do but as you can see it there what we'll do is we'll push it in until it goes flat and then we push the follower to the next bit there you go and the next one see it's resting now because the spring is just slightly under the shear line the spring will rest and you just push it down push your follower to the next one and the very last one which will be easy for you to see see it's just on top of the spring gently push it down and push your follower through and there we go um, as you know this bit is easy um, just make sure all your pins the pointy end is facing into the core as you'll certainly get problems if you put them the wrong way around and there we go we're all in let me grab our lock go to our follower make sure your springs and your drivers are at the bottom you can do it upside down but I prefer to do it this way and then make sure your core and your pins are facing well yeah facing you and the underneath here which is going to be running inside on top of the drivers is smooth nothing to catch it on so when you push it in it should just go straight through like that and we turn it and we lock it up just before we do that though I just have to put the key in to make sure it is fine as you can see it works smooth and we'll take that out now with these remember with some American kicks there is a uh, all different styles from uh, I think I've got one the backs are completely different where this is a circlet and you need a hollow follower for these which I do have but for these ones what they come in with is a little spring that fits in this hole and you have this pin that fits in the back take care that you don't lose this spring and this brass bar will fit in and what we do is we get the uh, top of it and the best way to do this is either tweezers or a uh, or a pick just if you see there you can push the pin down you just push the pin down gently and then start to screw the back on once it gets to a certain don't, don't over tighten it because you want a bit of slack from it else your core will be quite oh so i generally go back by one and there we go we fit nice we work nice nice and smooth uh, last but least is the challenge lock which is a lot different um, it's still easy, to, uh, same principle with the, um, but the thing is with a challenge lock, as you can see, springs are not always the same size. So, if that's the case, now this spring luckily, dead on the shear line. So, I get my pin, my driver pin, push it into the core, into the bible, sorry, put my follower in. And let it hook hook the pin and then I can push it slide to the next one and on the next one drop drop your pin in get your next driver same thing once it's in a little bit push on the buyer but uh, the, the follower to push on it And then slide your follower through. Now the next pin is a little bit trickier. So I'll show you in a minute. This is going to be fun to do this one. Now the spring's in. I do apologise about it being out of focus a bit. The spring's in. Now you can see it's a wafer. So we drop the wafer in. Hold it flat. As you can see, I've got the wafer right there. 
Same as before though. Push the follower until the pit the the wafer is above the hole and just gently push the wafer in and slide the follower over it, not all the way over, just halfway, because we have to put this on top of it, which can be tricky. So what you do is hold hold the pin quite tight and push it on top of the um, wafer and as you do catch push your follower through as you can see that pin now is on an angle because the follower has caught it what you do is release the pressure a little bit and push the pin in and we're in and the same with the next one drop the spring in now the springs on these are just on the shear line and you drop the pin in push the follower to the next one and next spring next driver just push it on the top push the follower against it to lock it in use tweezers to push it down and slide the follower through so we are now through and also with the bible be careful because a lot of these uh, sorry with the cores as you can see with bobbies we've got serrations so when you're dropping your pins in Make sure all your pins, your drive, uh, sorry, your key pins, are all nice and free. And remember to get your key to make sure they're all in the right way. As you can see, they're all up to the shear line, perfectly fine. That's what you want. And then, you now this one is the tricky one because you see there's an extra piece hanging off here. Um, if I push that in. The springs are at the bottom, so if I pushed in this way, uh, if I did it, say, upside down like this, the, the drivers would drop into this slot and you'd, you'd end up crushing springs and stuff. So just remember, if the back of it is difficult, find the smoothest bit, and you can see, as you can see, there's a split down there, that's where the key slides into. Um, now you can do it, don't get me wrong, you can do it with the key in, like this, um, but you're still going to get driver pins, if you put the key in, you're still going to get a driver pin that's going to lock into there, so what I suggest you do, in one second, there we go, make sure they'll pop out, what I'm going to do is, I'll put my hands here, I do apologise, right the springs are at the bottom, Drivers are at the bottom. I need to turn the core enough so the driver pins are going to slide along this part. Not this, uh, let me just put this down and apologise. Right, there we go. We're going to slide this core back into the Bible and we're going to make sure the drivers are running along this part here. Not where the groove is and obviously not on the top because you'll just lock it up. So we push it in slightly sideways I know where the drivers are going to be and we just slide it straight through we're done there we go and won't move it just yet as you can see the drivers are right there in line with that bit there where it's nice and smooth that uh, stopped me from completely screwing it over then make sure when you, you look at your front of your key is to turn it around make sure you lock it the right way there we go like that um, now the back of these locks, they normally come with uh, clips like this, they're just a simple set of screws and you can just put, well unscrew them off very easily, as you know yourself if you have disassembled this lock you know where these would have come from but you just Gently screw them back on. You don't need to put low. You don't really just nip them tight. You don't need them any more than that because you're just going to cause your your core to bind up a little bit, make it a lot harder to pick. And just nip it this up. There we go. 
Uh, let's put the key in, try it. And there we go. Absolutely smooth. So there we go. Um, now what I'll do is, like I say, I'll put the uh, dimensions up of the followers if you want to get some, you know, down or some spare aluminium from uh, like a DIY shop, but like I say, um, and you know, get them to cut it down for you. Um, but it's not too. Uh, I know some people it can be intimidating gutting when I first did it and reassembling it was up, but to be honest, a little bit of practice. And it becomes second nature. Yeah. And don't get, don't worry about if you fail as well, because the best of us fail guttings. We all do it. It just, it just happens. It's just a part of lock picking. We all fail guttings now and again. It's just good that if you can save the lock and recover it, and you know you're back at full working again. But um, yeah. Also, I've got to tell you about these. These. I didn't. I should have shown you, and I didn't. I do apologise. This is another type uh, tool you put inside the core, and what happens is when you put in the core, um, I've got I need some light. There's a line. Do you know what? I'll re I'll save this for the next video. What I'll do is um, I'll do a reassembling. Uh, I'll be quick in this video. I'll do a reassembling of a. Uh, American padlocks and I will use the smaller uh, followers and I'll show you how to reassemble these type of locks but luckily we'll be using one so it'll be a shorter video and also demonstrate how to use this as well but um, I, I know it was a long video I do apologize but I hope it helped somebody out there um, I suppose the best of my knowledge of uh, how to reassemble and put pins back in but um, I hope you liked it. Um, well, thank you very much for your patience. And thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. And bye. Don't forget to like.